Welcome back to the Validate Your Inventor Getting Started web series. My name is Dave May and today we're going to take a look at setting up a simple thermal analysis. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and open a file first. Again, uh, as usual, I'm going to open an IGES file, but you could open any generic CAD model from there or you know an inventor file, or likewise you could import an inventor file straight from your inventor program. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the analysis type now. But I'm going to go to thermal and set up a steady state heat transfer. I can do steady state or transient. I'm going to go ahead and choose steady state and say OK. Now, for those of you who have watched the other setup videos, uh, this is going to look very familiar to you. You'll notice there are only a few differences here really, right? So first thing I'm going to do is go to my mesh tab just like normal. And I'm going to just click generate 3D mesh, right? I'm just going to apply a default mesh to this model. Uh, again, I could go into my 3D mesh settings dialog and tweak the mesh settings if I wanted to, but in this case, the default should be all right. Now I'm going to go ahead and edit my material, so I right-click material and say edit, and I can define any material I want. I'm just going to go ahead and call this A36 steel. Now, if you were to pay attention to the material properties, notice these properties are thermal properties, right? I have mass density, thermal conductivity, and specific heat. Now, there's no specific heat defined for this, which is okay for a steady state analysis, but if it's a transient analysis I'm doing, I'm going to want to make sure to give it that information. All right. Now, in the other analysis types, we would mesh the model and then jump over to setup, and we'd add some loads and boundary conditions. Notice here, in the thermal analysis, I do the same exact thing. Although this time, instead of seeing things like, um, you know, general constraint, force, pressure, I see things like controlled temperature, convection, heat source, initial temperature, right? This makes perfect sense because this is what we're doing. We're trying to run a heat transfer analysis. So, you know, th these are the types of loads we'd expect. So I'll just go ahead and add a controlled temperature and I'll choose this surface up here. Uh, why don't I say this is held at 150 degrees Fahrenheit? And then I'll add some convections. I'm just going to pick a bunch of surfaces here. And I could window select these as well. Um, I'm just going to hold control and keep clicking a bunch. There we go. So I have all my primary surfaces selected. I'll go ahead and hit enter. Now I can add a convection coefficient and an ambient temperature. So I'll say it's room temperature, so it's about 72. And my temperature independent convection coefficient, um, I can calculate this using an easy to use calculator where you can set some conditions up about your flow and it will calculate your airflow. Or I can just say read from library, right? I'll, likewise, you could just type your number in if you know it. Um, in general, I do a lot of you know, ambient air convection. And this top value here is air at room temperature, right? So I just say, OK. It inserts the value for me, and away I go. All right. Again, there are a lot of different load options you have available to you. There's some, a few more down here below, actually. Uh, or you can go into your parameters, your model setup, you know, and give the entire model a certain temperature or something like that. Okay. Now, once you have these simple load and, and uh, boundary options set, all we have to do is go to Analysis and say Run Simulation.